Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games So Little Time. My name is Joachim as usual and today we'll be talking about Kero or kerosene I guess it's short for because it's all about gasoline. We're collecting jerry cans, we're exploring with our trucks, we're trying to make sure we don't spend too much gasoline to get the resources we need and we're rolling dice and so many things to talk about. But before I say anything else, Let's just check how to set up, how to play, and then how I feel about this game. Okay? Okay. See you on the flip side. Okay. Let's start with setting up. First of all, you have this deck of cards. Okay? So, you have these three cards, which are the claim cards. Okay? You can see them easily. All right? Doesn't matter which, which way they're up. It's really irrelevant but you put them on the side for now you have the start cards there's 12 of them okay so 12 start cards there we go these are all the start cards okay then we have 24 remaining cards okay so the 24 four remaining cards you will divide them into three decks okay so 24 divided by 3 is 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now you might see I didn't sleeve. I didn't sleeve because when I sleeve them, they no longer fit in the box. And I really like the insert. So they are not sleeved. Okay. So 3 decks of 8. All right. Now these 3 claim cards are going to go... And each of these decks, there you go. Of course, not like this, but the other way up. Up, and then one here. Okay. Then you shuffle them separately. Okay. Up. One deck, shuffle again. Of course, normally I would do this a lot more, uh, but this is just to tell you how to do it. So no real need to be super effective and you put it here then we have the starter cards okay you shuffle these as well da, 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 da. Up, 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 up. and then you put these on top okay then after you've done that we will take a look at the refinery the refinery is here okay this just means that you can refuel your truck and this is what it costs okay so then you also have the space for the colored dice that is here here you will place your colored dice okay let me just take them out there we go your colored dice go here there you go and then you have the Tuareg tiles. Now the Tuareg tiles, these are these bunch, okay. So now this one, these are these bunch, so you shuffle them, okay. You shuffle, 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 and then you place them right here, okay. Up, done. All right, then you will place the 10 permanent ability tiles next to the board. Now, these are the permanent ability tiles, okay, they're a bit smaller, all right, but more details about this, of course, this is just set up, so you will place them at the top, so it's easy for everybody to see, doesn't matter in which order you place them, just place them at the top, spread them out a little bit, and that is it, okay, there we go, okay. So those are the permanent abilities. They're all the way on the top there. Put it a little bit closer. Okay. There we go. All right. Then the next step that you will do is you're going to reveal the first six cards of the draw pile. So let's see. One, two, three four, five, and six. That part of the setup is done, okay? 
Then we have the new territories, which are here. This is the deck of new territories. This is the back, okay. You will shuffle these. Of course, normally I would do this a lot better. You put it down and then you reveal three or four territories. Okay, there you go. The territories are set up. Then you will also place all the jerry can tokens next to the board next to the board so basically anywhere where you have space what we did or what we always do is basically we divide it roughly in half and we put part of it here and part of it here so both players can easily reach them okay that seems like the fairest way to do that next is that people players will choose a truck so they'll choose one of these and that will determine your starter clan now they also say in the manual that you can see there's sand in there that's the kerosene if you want it to be filled up like the way it is now before you play you should put your board have it standing up upright so that way it will be filled already now I'm showing it the wrong way up it should be like this okay if you stand it upright the sand will come down and then it's already filled up so let's say we'll do it like this these are the two players and then they will also both get their um, explorer markers so they're actually people okay so here we go here we go here we go up, 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 up. and then for the other clan there we go and then we place them okay and then next we will also everybody will start a with two two erectiles randomly of course so one for him one for her one for him one for her okay and then also both players will start with two jerry cats to start the game all right and then the, the manual says the player who fueled up most recently collects the first player token which of course is a problem if you don't own a car but you know maybe you own a scooter or something else and if you own nothing at all just use a different way to do it of course and whoever is first player, they will take the five white dice and start the game. So before you start the game, you have to check, of course, who fueled up last and so on. And whoever is first player will get this token. Okay, this is the first player token. Uh, it says one, it just refers to being first player. It's not a point or something like that. Okay. So the next important thing to know about how this game works are the dice. All right, this is not a blooper, I will continue. So the dice, okay? So because these dice are very instrumental to the whole game. It's like the star of the game, okay? But first of all, these trucks come together with the dice. So the first phase in Cairo is basically refueling your truck. Now, the game starts with your truck already fueled up. It even says that you should put your game box up on the upside, right? Put it stand, stand it up. So the trucks will already fill before you start the game. Okay, so you have to wait around for the truck to get filled. So it's already filled. So the first phase of refueling your truck is not necessary. Okay, so you can skip you can skip that easily. So the second phase is that you roll your dice. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here for a second. So you start with the five basic dice, all right? You always have these available. So they have one of each resource. You have a grain, you have a brick, you have a gear, you have a recruit, and also you have a jerry can. But this is six-sided dice, so all of them also have a flame. Flames are bad, people. You want to ignore flames as much as possible. Okay, so when you roll your dice, you have several 
possibilities. Now, every player, let's say this is the first player, every player starts with two jerry cans, okay? So there's an X amount of things that you can do with your jerry can as well. And one of those things is to buy dice at the shack over here, okay? So you can see here at the shack, you have the three dice of the different colors. It costs one jerry can to get one die. So you start with two, so technically in your first turn you could immediately get two to have as big a roll as possible. Now, let's take a look at what they do. The blue one focuses on gears, okay, mostly gears, and you can also get this, which means if you get this, you can place one explorer on the new territories. I'll refer back to this later on when I, exp when I explain the exploring of the new territories. This one will give you either bricks, 3, 2, 1, or grain, 3, 2, 1. No special abilities, and also have a fire. So it's not 3, 2, 1, it's 3 and 2s, and it's a brick has one. Then you have the green one, it gives you jerry cans, and it gives you recruits, and it also gives you this, which means you can take a Tuareg tile, all right? So those are the special dice. So let's see what is important to check before you roll the dice. Honestly, there are many things that are important, but this is definitely one of them. Now, if you look at the stack of territories that is not in the image here, you can see on the back of the territories, it says if you roll, when you roll and you have this combination, a gear and a recruit, you can do this action. This action means you take one of your explorers, and you place it on one of the territories. So you can see it costs one recruit and one gear. So if you have, for example, three recruits and three gears, you could technically place three people and divide them however you want, all three on this one, or two and one, or one, 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 whatever, or one here, two there, it doesn't matter, okay? So it's important to look at the territories because they might be interesting. For example, if you have this territory, that means at the end of the game, you will get one point for each territory you have. All right, so it's already one point because you have one. This one means you will get one point for every green card. So the guard cards that you saw before, they all have a color, but I will ref refer to, the, to it in a minute. This one is you get one point for three cards of the same, for every three colors you own, sorry. This one, you get two points and you get four jerry cans. So if you like any of these territories, then you should remember that it requires one recruit and one gear to place one of these guys, okay? Another thing to focus on before you roll are of course, of course, the cards. Now, like I said, these were shuffled, so you need to have a little bit of luck to see what comes out, especially when you're first player, okay? So you need to look at what all these cards do, also what they require to get them. So for example, let's take a, let's take a look at this one. So these are the points, it's a question mark, because it all depends on this. If you have one of these cards, you get, a, you get two points. If you manage to collect two of them, then you get four, you have three, nine, if you have four of them, it's 13, okay? Also, it costs three bricks to get this card. You need to roll three bricks, okay? Um, these are like, you shall not pass cards because you see there's always a blocking in the card. Then the next one, this one will give you one point and you can place an explorer on a new territory style, all right? So, to grain. Once again, if you lacked any of the new of the new territory tiles, you could have get the, gotten this, or you can get that and then place it explorer. Same thing, one point. This time it costs two recruits. Okay. So basically, instead of a recruit and a gear, here you place two guys, but it's a recruit and a grain. <laughs> All right, this one, very simple, two points, no special ability, two bricks. And then these two are very interesting because remember at the top, which is now at the screen, you have the permanent abilities, right? And these cards allow you to get them. So let's say this yellow one, 
doesn't have any points, but if you manage to collect three grain and a jerry can and you spend it on this card, you can get this tile, which means for the rest of the game, you can use the yellow die for free. This, same thing, but you use the green die. So technically, if this player now rolls six grain and two jerry cans, they get both die for the rest of the game for free, which of course would be a huge benefit. But it is very difficult to roll that as well. So I guess we'll see. More cards will come out here later on, okay? We are now ready to roll. Let's say I want to try to get these for sure, one of these. So I'm going to spend one jerry can to get the yellow die because that gives a lot of grain could potentially give me three right but then thinking about it if you need six grain and two jerry cans that means three of these need to be grain okay and then you need to have two more jerry cans i still have one here and then i might roll one here now you have the flames right when you roll so these are the, the dice i roll with when you roll if you roll a flame the dice goes away and it's useless now Okay, there is one two erectile, which I conveniently put on the top, this one, that if you use this, this means that you can roll and re-roll flames, okay? But there's only two of these in the game, if I'm not mistaken. So if you have this, it could really make you have a really good turn. But in this case, the player didn't have it, so tough luck. The player does start with two two erect tokens, but they're these, and they're not really useful in this case but i'll explain what they do later on okay and also i just remembered remember to look at these cards you can see they all have a color okay so this one is brownish okay or gold whatever you prefer these are green cards right and these are blue cards so one of the territories was referring to green cards then you would want to collect this one for example all right so i'm gonna roll of course, I've got my eye on this one. And then I'm also not really against getting uh, an explorer or something, but we'll see if that's at all possible. I really need to roll this. If I roll a fire, uh, it's already going to be very difficult. All right, here you go. One, two, three. Okay, and what's going to happen is, because I haven't told you yet, you will take your truck and you will put it on its behind, on its butt, okay? Flip it over and then you start rolling with one hand. Pick up and roll with one hand. That's why I'm using a dice tray. If you don't use a dice tray and you're a bit of an you know, excited roller, they might go everywhere. Okay, And no one will care because it's rolling. So you tip it up. Right? You put it on its butt. And basically what it, what it shows is that you're driving around the wasteland collecting stuff. Okay, So your gasoline, your caro, will be slowly decreasing okay so it's very very tense okay here we go three oh wait three two one go all right so i'm already very unlucky i have one fire already so it's going to be very difficult to get any of the, the stuff that i want so i need these two already so i need to hope for two grain okay very unlucky so yeah okay i can forget about it now so at the moment i have one jerry can one grain and one gear so i'm gonna give it up i'm gonna just go try to go for two grain at least okay, i have two grain and one guy the guy is useless so i'm gonna keep rolling to get something useful no no yes jerry can stop you don't have to say stop you just to flip your car so this is the amount of gasoline I have left, which is not a lot. And these are the dice that I have as a result. Now, of course, I gambled to try to go for one specific card. Okay, I could have just bought an extra dice and do more stuff. Like the first time I played, I had a lot more as a result. But you have to imagine, you have to realize it's a dice game. Okay, you're gonna have bad rolls. You're gonna have good rolls. Okay, so anyway, I have this two grain i can use that for here get this card and then this one will just get me a jerry can here we go these will come back i get this one which is one point at the end of the game 
and I will be able to place an explorer. My card will go here at the bottom. This is where all your cards will go, okay? Now the truck is here. Normally the truck is not here, okay? <laughs> so the card is here. Here is where your territories go. Here is actually where your jerry can should be, actually, and your trade tiles and so on. So I can place an explorer, right? And I already took a blue tile. So let me just quickly adjust the camera by myself. So I kind of like the idea of having a lot of gas. So I'm going to go for this one. So I'm going to put this guy here because of what it said on the card. Okay. Now, I think now is a good time to also look at what the flames do. Remember, I had rolled three flames. But for that, we have to take a look at the cards again. Okay. So I rolled three flames, all right? So then you look here. If you have rolled more than three flames, so in this case, uh, more than two flames, in this case we have three, right? So it's plus one. That means we burn one of these cards. So technically, if you have a really bad roll and you rolled all flames, uh, like this, for example, da -da -da -da, four flames, right? Then you would burn four cards. So even if, so, sorry, you can see it, then you would burn four cards. So even if you have a very bad roll, the at least you're able to take good cards away from other people. So now I have this, right? So I don't want the other player to get this one, for example, so I can burn it. And in retrospect, remember that I rolled the one jerry can. I could have kept rolling to get a flame just to make sure he or she couldn't have gotten this one either. Okay, that would have been a better strategic choice, but I didn't think about it. So after that, the turn is over. Okay, you've gotten your resources. You've sent out explorers. You've taken your cards. Done. So the next phase is you move the cards to the right. Okay, up, up, and you draw two new ones. This one which means, once again, a permanent ability, right? And this means you, whenever you are resolving your dice, you can spend any, every grain you have to get one jerry can each, okay? As many as you want, as often as you want after you've rolled. All right, not as often as you want, as, when you finish rolling, of course. This one, okay, you uh, spend two grain and you get three jerry cans. Okay. So that was one round, right? So let's take a look at what all these tiles do, because that's one thing that I haven't touched upon yet. And then you've technically heard, learned everything about the game, but I'll also do another round for the other player. And then we'll do the refueling phase because you haven't seen that one yet. But first, let's take a look at the Tuareg tiles. Now, these two, this basic, this is very simple. This means that you can basically switch and swap tiles on the uh, territories that you have people on, okay? So you can move up to two tiles and swap up to two tiles with each other, which is always good if you think a round is going to end. More about that later. This one means that you can remove, you can send back one of the explorers of the other person, but then you have to pay them two jerry cans for their trouble, okay? So you have to decide if it's worth it, the territory or not. So once again, if they have an explorer on a territory that you want, you pay them two jerry cans and they remove their explorer, okay? Now, the two rectiles that the other player has, let's take a look, the same one that I already said, and this one, that means that any time they can have a free refuel action. Because remember here, refueling costs one jerry can, or if you want to do it twice, two jerry cans, okay? All right, let's take a look at the other ones. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so this means you can burn a card. Just any card that's here, you can burn it. Then this one means refueling stage. I haven't explained this one yet, but basically when you're refueling, you are using all the dice, but this one forces your opponent to only use the white dice and not all the dice. Okay. 
This one means after rolling the dice and getting your resources, you can get two extras, but no jerry cans. So you can get recruits, bricks, or grain, any combination. Okay, same thing, same thing. Burn a card, fuel limited. This one means you can use two dice of your choice, two colored dice of your choice when you're rolling. Very good. Same thing, never fuel thing. Okay, this one is very powerful. Everybody wants this one. And this actually makes it very worth it to try to buy some tiles because it costs two gasoline. Because this means during your roll, all the flames, the three flames that I just rolled, whenever you roll a flame, you can re-roll your flames, okay? So nothing gets burnt as well. And you can maximize your resources. Very, very handy. Because I'll be using this as an example for my next roll to show its impact. Now, do I think this is the best two rectile? Yeah, it is. But of course, you use it once and then that's it. It's good at certain times. Like, for example, now with these, with the previous round, actually, with the two tiles, this would have been awesome. But you need to have enough fuel, of course. And then switching and another one like this. Okay, so you can get these when you pay two jerry cans but remember paying two jerry cans is also expensive because you also need these to refuel all right okay so now let's move on to the next player's round so the next player decides to just pay two jerry cans up straight and is just going to get the blue one because they like the special action here. And they're also going to get the yellow one because of the grain, because you never know, they might be able to get this special one, even though they just spent all their jerry cans that they have, okay? Remember, we flip over the truck and then you start rolling with one hand. Of course, you can flip it over with one hand and start rolling with the other hand, but you can never use two dice while rolling, okay? So, three, two, one, let's go. All right, so, whoa, no flames, really, really good. So I have one jerry can, that's good. I have two uh, wheat, that's also very good. Um, what else is really good? I uh, like the two gears, but not really anything to use it for. There's no cards there. Um, so I'll just keep the two gears anyway. Let's just see what happens. All right, so a fire, that's bad. Two more gears, not useful. I'm gonna keep the brick. Uh, two more gears, not useful. Another brick, that's useful. One gear, not useful. I still need a grain. I'm not getting a grain. Okay, I'm gonna sacrifice the two bricks to get a grain. Still no grain. Come on, come on, come on, no grain. Yes, a grain, okay. And then I stop. Now look, look, there's hardly anything left, okay? so. In comparison of the two turns, you can see the top player has quite a bit more left than the bottom one. Okay, so let's see. Three flames and then this stuff and then this. Now, I realized you couldn't really see the cards, but you can still see the requirements while I was rolling. All right. Now, let's take a look at what they can buy. The result of their roll was three flames and then this collection, okay? Now you can see the two gears is useless. Nothing requires gears. I have no idea why I was keeping it. Let's just call it stress. Then I have the three grain and the jerry can, which takes care of this one, okay? And then I have three flames, okay? So that goes here. So only one of them will be a card that's burnt. Um, I also, yeah, that's it. So. Let's see, this one goes away. I get this one, all right? And because you get this one, you also get the token here. And I will show you in a second where that goes. And then we burn another card. Let's say, okay, I don't want him or her to get three jerry cans. I'm just gonna get rid of this, hop. And then move forward again. And two cards are drawn, okay? So we managed to get the special action, okay? As usual, the card will go 
here at the card in the card space okay because the color will count towards the territories for example this one that requires greens this one however will go here so from now on this player always remembers that they have a green extra die for free for the rest of the game now let's take a look at what causes a round to end so every round players will be buying cards and they will be and they will get burnt and so on uh, so they will always be moving away so every time we will be drawing new cards now at one point in the starter cards there are no claim cards okay so this card will come this card will come and then once we reach the the, the neutral cards the general cards there might be a claim card and when we reach a claim card the round will end so Let's keep going. No, no, no. Yes. So the moment a claim card pops its ugly head, whatever, then the round will end. So what happens when the round ends? Okay, so we have drawn the claim card, okay, while we were refilling. Now, let's say we have done several rounds already. So there's like different people everywhere, okay so something like this okay so then we check what happens at the new territories immediately so we will check whoever has majority so for this one there is a tie all right so nothing happens both of them go back to where they came from this is discarded so remove the game box this one you can see brown in this case has majority so they get to keep the tile from now on it goes here and they will score points at the end of the game for uh, every green card they have which is already they have one so it's already one point here it's another tie now of course at one point uh, during their turn not anymore but in the past they could have played this one to make sure they have more majorities but they didn't okay but only during their turn not during this phase so this goes back goes here nobody gets it discarded and then they're the only ones here this goes back and they get four jerry cans and two points at the end of the game okay so one two three four then four new territories are drawn up sorry up up and up so to quickly explain these points you get one two erectile and three points to explain these territories i mean you get one point and then two points for each set of colors so one uh, orange one blue one green for each set you get two points and then this one you get a two erectile two gasoline and two points and then for this one it is one point and then plus three points for uh, let me just double check this real quick for four or more cards of the same color okay that's what that one means all right so let's take a look at the other tiles while we're at it so same thing as before one point for every blue card four points and one point for every brown card so we just reset it right so these will stay here until the second claim card comes out these will be reset then then we have these four and when the third claim card so once again these are the claim cards when the third one comes out the game will end okay so we have done the reset then this card will go away feel free to just put it there it doesn't matter and then you will continue filling up the row and you will continue playing so now I've basically touched on everything the game has to honor, offer, except one thing. Well, two things, end game scoring, but also fueling up your tanker. Because you can see these two tankers are kind of unhappy. They don't have a lot of gasoline left. So how do you fuel up your tanker? It's pretty straightforward, actually. So this is one of my favorite parts of the game and also one of the most infuriating parts of the game. So, let's see if I can put it like this. There you go. If the left player, this player wants to refuel, the right player, this one, will be rolling. Now, 
How does that work? Remember, when you are rolling for yourself to get cards and resources, it's on its butt, right? Now, to refuel, obviously, you're going to have to do it the other way around. But you can see you cannot put it flat on its nose. It doesn't work. So you're going to have to hold it upside down. So you, when you are refueling, you hold it upside down while the other player is trying to roll eight flames. So two, four, six, eight. And there's an extra rule. Let's say they have rolled seven flames and there's only one left. Then they roll five more times. The moment they get a flame, they stop. And this one will go back to horizontal. But if they roll five misses, it automatically becomes a flame. Because otherwise you might be rolling until infinity. And obviously at any point when the tanker is full, then you can stop rolling as well. All right. So let's try this. Okay. I will be the I will be both players. So with this hand, I'm trying to roll flames as much as possible to make sure this player doesn't get too much fuel. But first of all, this player has to decide whether they pay one jerry can to fuel once or two jerry cans to fuel twice. Okay. Fueling twice will be twice in a row. And remember, you had the two erectile that anyone can play that would limit someone to rolling only five instead of eight, okay? Which of course is good for the other player and not for you who is trying to refuel their tanker. So let's give it a shot, shall we? So one, two, three, go. All right, two flames. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's go faster, three flames. Okay, no flames, and you can see it's filling up, okay? So four, five, six, and seven. So now I have to roll five times to get a flame. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, stop. So this is the amount that they were able to tank. Now if you see, if I flip it up, it still has space, okay? So they weren't able to fill up completely. But this is the amount of time that they will have for their next roll to try to get resources. So then they might say, okay, I need to fuel up again. But of course, then you're making them spend more resources. So it is what it is, right? It's very tense and it's hilarious to see people try their best to do it as fast as possible. Okay, so that was all the phases. Remember, you start by refueling if needed, then you roll to get cards, and resources and territories and so on then you burn cards if needed and um, you refill where, ne where necessary and then it's the next player's turn and these tiles you can play at any time except for that one refueling one that you play on someone else's turn okay and it keeps going back and forth until you reveal one of the claim cards that will end the round you will score these locations you do it all over again until the second one comes out, score locations, you do it all over again, score locations again, and that's the end of the game. Okay, let's take a look at endgame scoring. One final thing before endgame scoring is the following. Let's say this first, this player, the left one, was first player, okay? And they have finished the game, okay? The last card came out, these are... Uh, removed basically or, or refilled and then these have been scored and they're gone right they're gone so let's say one for here two for there uh, two for there whatever okay but it's still this player's turn okay they can still refuel their tanker they can still try to get any cards that are available but of course the territories are gone so what can they do they can still send out explorers if they cover this spot they get one point if they manage to cover this spot, they get three points. And on their turn, they can cover both spots. So they can still get four points at the end of the game. And then that brings us to endgame scoring, which is very straightforward. You count up all the points on your cards, if there are any. So for example, two points and then the question mark, you have to check, of course. Three points here and also question mark, you have to check. And then also your territories and any special requirements that have already gone over. Okay, add them all up, and whoever has the most is the most badassest clan, apparently. 2471, two, it says so in the rule book. All right, and it doesn't say anything about ties. So, I guess if it's a tie, play again. 
There's one more thing that I want to say. Final, final, final thing um, is the special abilities because I haven't actually gone over them. So I will do that now. The special abilities. Okay. This one means whenever you roll, you will get an extra gear. Whenever you roll, you will get an extra recruit. Whenever you roll, you will get an extra brick. From now on, for the rest of the game, you will always get the yellow die for free. Whenever you roll, you get an extra grain. For the rest of the game, you will get the blue die for free. At the start of your turn, you will get a jerry can. So once again, it means refueling is always an option for you. This is the most special one. That means if there is a tie when you're on a territory, this one breaks ties, okay? But you can see it is only on one territory, okay? Not on all four of them. And this one is you get the green die for the rest of the game for free. And this means that you can use any grain results on dice. You can transform them into fuel. These are the special tiles. So that's how you play Caro. So how do I feel about it? Well, I really love it. <laughs> it's not really a surprise, I guess, when I was explaining it. Um, and also, I don't tend to make videos about games I don't like. So I think it's pretty straightforward. I love the theme. I love the fact that you use the sand timer. And it's technically just a sand timer, but it, the idea that you're driving around getting everything and you only have X amount of fuel because it's hard to come by, it works in my mind, okay? Um, and also the graphics, it just speaks Borderlands to me, okay? I just want to continuously say one-liners of board, of board, Borderlands, you know, I have the shiniest meat cycle and stuff like that. Anyway, just check out, if you want to have a, if you don't know Borderlands, you want to have like a feel of what it's like, just type in Borderlands Krieg. So Krieg is K-R-I-E-G. Just watch that video. It's called A Meat Cycle for Two. It's, you know, anyway, just go ahead. But the game, the game, it's, it's, it's of course a luck fest, kind of, um, because it's rolling dice. So you need to take that going in. You need to realize that. And there is some strategy, you know, which cards you're going to get for, which cards are you burning so the other person can't get it. If you're collecting the two erectiles, you can really use them uh, to your advantage a lot. Certain cards, when they come up, you really want them. So, of course, if they come up on someone else's turn and they get to roll for it, that, of course, is not a good feeling. Because I can imagine in any game that it could be that somebody gets a lot of the bonus tiles and you have you don't even have an option to get them which of course would not be fun but i don't know i still if you know that going in and it's part of the game and it plays fairly quick there are some ap moments though before you roll you're like okay what do i need what do i, re what do I really want to get and some things seem way more powerful than others like the ability of breaking a tie is really strong obviously the tour tile where you can reroll the flames is really powerful, obviously. But then imagine that you have two tiles that allow you to switch uh, the explorers, and you can do that twice on your turn because you can use as many tiles as you want on your turn. It's pretty big, you know. So after playing a couple of times, more strategies open up. Okay, you can hoard the tiles until the end or when you really see a territory you like. You can go full on territories, you can go full on cards, you can do a mix of both. It's nice. It's nice. It looks nice. It's so fun with the trucks to handle them. I mean, just look at these. And then the fact that you have to slam them down, of course, not too hard because that's not really good. You don't want to break them. But I can't wait to paint these as well. Painted, they look even better. And um, yeah. So far, everyone I've played with it, they everyone I've played with, they enjoyed it, and the the videos that you get just from reactions, people rolling and everything, it's uh, it's fun. It's really really fun. I enjoy it immensely. Okay, so yeah, if you like these kind of games, of course, it has a lot of luck with rolling. You can have the game that I played, one of the last games that I played this. I was really lucky with my first roll, but then later on I had some really, really bad rolls. So it really depends. Um, a friend of mine at one point 
use the flame to a rig once, twice. Twice he rolled zero flames during his roll. So yeah, all those kind of things. But yeah, I like it. It is it plays fairly quick, about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on your AP, right? And also depending on how quickly those claim cards come out. And um yeah, it's nice, it looks great. People will probably say, like, what are you guys playing when they see it on the table? So it has a nice presence. And uh, I can't imagine it will be uh, leaving my collection anytime soon. So that was Caro um, from uh, Hurricane Games. And of course, I should also mention, which I didn't do in the intro, it's designed by Prospero Hall and the art by Piero. And it was kind of surprising because not long ago, I had another game by Prospero Hall. I was like, huh? I have more than one of this person that I've never heard, heard of before. And uh, that game is Godzilla Tokyo Clash that I just got recently. So yeah, you know, it can be surprising at times. Anyway, this was Kero. I liked it. I highly recommend it. It is a gem of a game. It really, really is. So I suggest you go get it. By the way, I think at the moment of speaking, it's even 50% off on Amazon. So, you know, if you've watched this recently, go get it while it's hot. <laughs> Bye-bye. This was me, Joachim, from So Many Games, So Little Time, and I'll see you next time.